If you need security, this is not the profession for you. Writing is a, 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 a series of rolling the dice. I only live a short distance from here and created Beastly Books. Almost all of the books that we sell here at Beastly Books are autographed books. So when we do the Santa Fe Literary Festival, I'll probably kidnap some of those authors and make them sign a bunch of books uh, that we will then be able to offer here at Beastly Books. You've seen the, the, the big crowds that a Neil Gaiman draws or a Stephen King draws, and you imagine it being you. You don't often imagine I'm going to give a signing and no one will come. But you have to be prepared for that. Game of Thrones first came out. I did a book tour and, and uh, you know, I literally had some events where, where nobody showed up. I, I even had one infamous event in St. Louis where I drove four people out of the store. Everybody was in there really didn't want to hear me read and talk about my book, so they all left when I got up to talk. Um, that doesn't happen anymore. Now instead we, you know, there are huge crowds in the street and they, they use electric cattle prods to keep them in line and uh, so forth. Uh, you know, it's a good thing for an author to do, even if you're only, only six people show up. But if they like you, you do a good presentation, you do a good interview, you do a reading from the book, you hear your prose for the first time and they like it, then you have a fan for life or for a long time. And even if there's only six at the first event, maybe there'll be 12 at the next event and maybe in a few years there'll be 100. So, you know, you do a class with 20 writers in it and you get a sense of who's really talented and who's good and who's more journeyman and the ones who you really don't think are going to make it. But they surprise you, people who, who didn't seem, at least initially, to be uh, super talented. Build good careers by mere perseverance and, okay, I got a rejection. Well, I'm writing a new story. Okay, I got another rejection. I'm writing a new story. I'm going to keep at it. I'm going to keep at it. I mean, Ray Bradbury famously papered an entire room of uh, his house with uh, his rejection slips. There is, uh, both in Hollywood and even in the world of publishing, this is uh, undoubtedly a certain role for networking, going to something like the Santa Fe Festival, meeting people. That's a real advantage, being charming and friendly and it, even more noticeable, I think, in Hollywood, where a lot of the uh, pitches that people do are verbal. Um, so you, you get someone who's in the room and they're pitching an idea for a new TV show. What is that person like? How good are they in the room, as they say? Uh, just telling the story verbally. Are they hooking the, uh, the executives and the, the studio people who are listening to it? I often tell new writers, if you need security, this is not the profession for you. Writing is a series of rolling the dice. And, you know, I look at my own career and a great start, but then I hit an iceberg and my ship sank. And I was taking courses in how to sell real estate for no money down, because I thought I was about to lose my house. But then I persisted and then I had some good luck to pick up for the bad luck. And, you know, then a few years down the line, I hit another iceberg and that ship sunk too. But I kept going and uh, here I am today. I think I'm typical of most writers, you know, if I get a hundred good reviews, I am very pleased, but it's the one bad review that really sticks in the craw and pisses you off. <laughs> and that's the one you can't forget. And you think, oh, I got a hundred good ones, but oh, how dare you say that? He's so wrong. You have to resist the urge to write a letter to the editor disputing your review. Never, never argue with the bad reviews. Big mistake. That's something a new writer should also remember. <laughs>